Arcadian Vanguard presents the Wrestling News in your daily wrestling newscast for Friday, August 11th, 2023. Good morning. I'm Mike Sepervivi. We begin today with some WWE corporate news. A new SEC filing has confirmed that the WWE UFC merger under the Endeavor umbrella is set to be finalized in the fall. As previously reported, the new company will be called TKO Group Holdings. The filing also lists 10 of the 11 board members for the new company. In addition to WWE Executive Chairman Vince McMahon, WWE CEO Nick Khan, and Endeavor CEO Ari Emanuel, they also include Endeavor President Mark Shapiro, Atlanta Hawks and State Farm Arena CEO Stephen R. Coonan, and New England Patriots and Kraft Group President Jonathan A. Kraft, among others. It has been noted that not included in the list at this time are Paul Triple H. Levesque, WWE's chief content officer, who has also been a board member of WWE since 2015. It is not known if he may be announced as the 11th and final board member. Last night's edition of Ring of Honor streamed on Honor Club and featured matches taped last Saturday night at the Bon Secours Wellness Arena in Greenville, South Carolina. In the main event, Shane Taylor defeated Gravity in the finals of the ROH World TV Title Eliminator Tournament to earn a shot at the title currently held by Samoa Joe. Also on the show, ROH World Women's Champion Athena defeated Rachel Elring in Elring's second appearance on Ring of Honor Television. Elring previously challenged Willow Nightingale for the NJPW Strong Women's title on the June 4th episode. In other selected results, Gates of Agony defeated the Work Horsemen, Tony Nese beat Pat Buck, Lee Moriarty topped Andrew Ebert, and Billy Starks beat Robin Renegade. The Renegade twins attacked Starks after the match, but Athena made the save. I mean, this is, the, I mean, it's one thing to take risks in a sanctioned time match in between the bell. Oh, come on, the Renegades. What? An interesting development. As, as Charlotte continues to pound away on Billy Stark, the women's world champion making her way down to the ring. Oh, oh, Robin, Robin wiped out! Whoa. Oh Ducks still right from Charlotte! Form! From Athena to Charlotte! An update on the status of Wyndham Rotunda, a.k.a. Bray Wyatt. A new Fightful report has indicated that Wyatt's most recent absence from WWE TV has been at least partly due to a serious illness he's been fighting. The specific nature of the illness was not made public, but it was noted that it was threatening to both his career and his life. Wyatt is reportedly getting closer to being medically cleared to compete again. The exact date of his return is not known, but there had been... But there had been discussion of bringing him back in time for SummerSlam with a return storyline that was reportedly approved before it was decided his health would still not allow it. Wyatt has not wrestled since a house show match last February in Rockford, Illinois against L.A. Knight. Moving to ratings news, last Wednesday's episode of AEW Dynamite drew a total audience of 846,000 viewers to TBS, according to Russell Nomics down 5.3% from last week's 200th episode edition. The rating in the key 18-49 to 49 year old demographic was a 0.29, down from last week's 0.31 rating. Approximately 773,000 viewers in the demo tuned in, down 33,000 on average from last week. Despite the drops, Dynamite was the top-ranked show on cable TV in the 18-49 to 49 year old demo for the fifth time in six weeks and finished third when including broadcast networks. Taking a look at Japan, New Japan Pro Wrestling's 33rd annual G1 Climax Tournament reached its quarterfinal stage yesterday at the Funabashi Arena in Funabashi, Chiba. The most notable result saw Evil upset IWGP World Heavyweight Champion Sonata and advancing to the semifinals, ending Sonata's G1 undefeated streak at 7. In the show's main event, Kazuchika Okada pinned IWGP World Television Champion Zack Sabre Jr. after a rainmaker to also advance to the Final Four. Joining them will be Tetsuya Naito, who pinned Hikaleo, and IWGP United States Champion Will Ospreay, who bested never-open-weight champion David Finley. 
The semifinals take place on Saturday inside Tokyo's Sumo Hall, with Okada facing Evil and Naito taking on Osprey. A programming note, the Wrestling News plans on covering Saturday's semifinal and Sunday's final of the G1 Climax Tournament on the days of the event, if deadline allows. Day 3 of Pro Wrestling Noah's annual N1 Victory Tournament took place Thursday at Kurokin Hall in Tokyo. Winners included Yuki Yoshioka, Yume Anzai, Masa Kitamiya, Saxon Huxley, Jake Lee, Katsuhiko Nakajima, and Keno. GHC World Champion Jake Lee currently leads Block A with 6 points, while 3 men are tied for the B Block lead at 4 points. And we close with Impact Wrestling, which aired on Access TV and the company's YouTube channel yesterday, with matches that were taped on both July 28th and 29th at the stadium in Cicero, Illinois. Rich Swan and Sammy Callahan bested Ace Austin and Chris Bay in the first round of the number one contendership tournament for the Impact World Tag Team Championship, currently held by Flash Morgan Webster and Mark Andrews. Swan and Callahan were helped in part by interference from John Schuyler and Jason Hotch. And Swan battling Hotch up the entranceway. Breaking down on the ramp. Away. Oh, oh my God, and Schuyler just wiped out Austin with the stroke. Austin now vulnerable in the ring. Callahan didn't see it go down. Oh, now Callahan oh. taking advantage of the circumstance. Never saw the involvement of Schuyler. Callahan and Swan advance. In the main event, Brian Myers, Bully Ray, and Moose won a six-man tag over Black Taurus, Laredo Kid, and Samurai Del Sol. Near the finish of the match as Bully Ray attempted to rip Laredo Kid's mask off, PCO appeared and menaced Bully before fighting off Moose and Myers. The last time we saw PCO, it was Bully Ray and Macklin lighting PCO on fire, but he lives! I am oh! Frankenstein! In other results, Kushida beat Speedball Mike Bailey, Dirty Dango defeated Bupinder Grugier. After the match was over, Dango was confronted by Jake Something, who sent the former Fandango packing after a punch to the face, and Jody Threat defeated Alicia Edwards. Frankie Kazarian had thwarted interference from Alicia's husband, Eddie Edwards, during the match, but after it ended, Kazarian went to hit Eddie with a kendo stick, accidentally striking Alicia. And before we leave you today, we'd like to remind you that however you consume your content, you can find the wrestling news 24 hours a day and seven days a week across social media. On Twitter, follow us at Wrestling News AV. Our Facebook page is also Wrestling News AV. The wrestling news can also be found on the Arcadian Vanguard YouTube page. And for those who utilize Amazon Echo devices, just tell Alexa to play the Wrestling News podcast. And remember to make sure you add podcast at the end. Once again, for daily updates, breaking news, and more, follow the wrestling news across social media. And that's the news for today. If anything happens, we will be here to tell you about it. No clickbait, no paywall, just the wrestling news. The wrestling news is a division of Arcadian Vanguard, and the wrestling newscast is a production of the Arcadian Vanguard Podcast Network.